Sometimes things just don't go as planned. I pulled the Spectrum 48K down because I got a really cool little expansion for it. Something that I was rather eager to show you all. But when I plugged this in quickly to test it, well, it didn't work. And I'm not really sure why. Now, to be perfectly honest, since we originally looked at this machine, now going back two years, well, it hasn't really had a lot of use. It has been down the odd time to play a game or two, but in recent months, yeah, I haven't had this thing out. It's just been sitting on the shelf. Now, that said, I did borrow the Z80 out of this back when we were looking at the ZX81. The CPU in that machine was dead. And the quickest place I could get a Z80 was in here. So we took this one out, stuck it into that ZX81 to get it up and going again. I just fitted this socket here, ordered that replacement chip, stuck that in and never thought any more about it. But as you can see, it is just throwing garbage on the screen. We do, however, have our diagnostic cart. So let's remove power from the spectrum We'll plug that in, plug the power in again and see what it does now. And so far, yeah, that all looks normal. Low RAM, 16K test pass, but look at that, unknown or corrupted RAM. Now, I know what you're going to say. The EAP ROM here doesn't have a sticker covering the window, but do bear in mind for most of its life, this board is sitting inside this case. There is no way UV light is getting anywhere near that window to affect that chip. In any case, the lighting I have in the man cave here, it is all LED based and emits very little, if any, UV light. So I can't really see how that could be a problem, but I suppose what we should maybe do is just pull that out and test it because everything else, as you can see, well, everything else has passed. So to test the ROM chip, we can just use the TL866 and the XG Pro software. So we need to select our chip, and it is a 27C512. This is a 64K chip that I used in the Spectrum. The original ROM is only 16K in size, but I just quadrupled that up and wrote it to the 64K ROM. This particular chip is from ST. That's it there, the M27C512. So let's try and read it out. And well, that passed successfully. It read the contents of the chip out okay and at a glance, that all looks fine. But we do need to verify that, although I do need to recreate my 64K ROM image. We can do that from within the command prompt. I have it stored in this directory. There it is there, 48K.ROM. And all we're gonna do is copy that to itself four times to create our 64K ROM image. So copy slash b because we're working with binary. So copy that four times into a file that we'll call 27c512.rom. And there it is. So back into the XG Pro software, we can now load that new rom. Again, at a glance, that looks the same. But we can now verify it against what is in the chip. And yeah, that chip is fine. So we know it's not the wrong chip or the contents of it, even though the test cart itself that would suggest otherwise. But something is definitely getting corrupted by the Spectrum is trying to read from that chip. So let's take a quick look at the schematics. Our Spectrum is an issue 3B, and we can get those schematics from spectrumforeveryone.com. I'll leave a link to this in the video's description. So the ROM chip. As we can see, it is more or less directly connected to the CPU. 
on the address bus and the data bus and also seemingly directly connected to the upper RAM. The data bus is then connected to the lower RAM and to the ULA via a series of resistors. The address bus between the CPU and the ULA is connected via two LS157s. So what could possibly be wrong here? Well, let's have a think about it, shall we? The test cart ran everything fine, it passed every test apart from the ROM chip itself, although we know that ROM is good. So can't be a fault in the ROM, can't be anything there that's dragging down, say one of the data bits or something, causing a problem, because if it was, this would have detected it, or it should have. Can't really be a problem on the address bus side of things, because equally I would have expected this to uh, flag it up if the Spectrum itself would have even worked. So can't for example be a fault in the ULA or a fault in one of those 157s. Let's try going around the ROM chip with our logic probe. So let's take a look around the signals on our chip. Should see 5 volt on pin 1 there, yes. But what about the rest of these? So pin 2 is pulsing, as is 3 and 4. Yep, all of these look fine. Pin 14 should be ground, and yep. Pin 15, hey, that might be a problem. We have a floating pin. No activity whatsoever. What about 16? Well, that looks normal again. 20 is held high. Well, 21's pulsing. Oh, this is 22. 27 and 28, they're high. But yeah, all of that looks pretty much fine apart from pin 15. Although there's pin 15 pulsing now. Definitely floating a minute ago, wasn't it? Must be a reset or a power cycle anyway. And yeah, no activity there. What is pin 15 doing? If we go back to the schematic on the ROM chip, pin 15 is data line D3. So that most definitely should have activity on it from the very start. Pin 16, for example, is data line D4, and it has plenty of activity on it. D3 is doing nothing. But if we follow the schematic, where is D3 on, say, the CPU? That should be on pin 8 of the CPU, so let's have a look at that. And it's certainly pulsing away on the CPU. So no issues there. I am definitely starting to think that we might just have a physical problem. Let's test that with the multimeter. So according to the schematics, we should have a straight connection between pin 15 on the ROM and pin 8 on the CPU. And we don't. This is definitely in continuity, yep. But there is no connectivity there. So is it that simple? That would certainly seem to be the case. If we go to pin 16 on the ROM, that is data line D4 which on the CPU should be pin 7. And yeah, that's fine. So it would appear we have a physical break somewhere. Of course the question is where is that break? Data line D3 is also directly connected from the CPU to a couple of resistors. R12 and R4 are in this area. So there's R16, so presumably 15, 14, 13, 12. And yeah, that connectivity is okay. Well, if we take our other lead back to the ROM, and uh, nope, there is nothing there. Equally, there should be connectivity down to IC18, this ROM chip here on pins 2 and 14. So we'll just check it on pin 2. And yeah, that is present to the CPU, but again, seemingly missing to the ROM chip itself. 
So I think we're looking for a bit of physical damage between the ROM chip and the CPU. And I suppose that makes sense, doesn't it? Because if there was any damage anywhere else, that would have manifested when we ran the tests from the diagnostic card. Say if there was a fault or a split on that data line D3 between the CPU and the RAM, well, that would have flagged up during the RAM tests. But no, that's not the case. So there must be something going on just between those two. Considering the last thing I did to this machine was taking out the CPU, I'm wondering, did I maybe accidentally nick something in the process? Let me have a closer look. And for once, the fact that we don't have a silk screen on the top of this board here, it is actually working to our favor. So with the multimeter still in continuity and on that pin 15, that is the trace for it there. We have connectivity all the way down that trace to the edge of the CPU socket. But I think that is that trace there, which should be continuing underneath that socket. It isn't connected to it at this point. It should be connected up here somewhere on pin 8. But if we come to the other side, there's nothing happening. Although if we go on to that there and look for pin 8, is connectivity there okay? So there must be a break between there and there. And if you look at the shape of that trace there, there's your problem. Granted, I have bent it out quite a bit, but I don't think that's right. Somehow that trace has got split. And I honestly have no idea how. Because it's not connected to the pins on this side, it just passes between them. And obviously when I was desoldering the old CPU that was there, I mean that was all done from the bottom side of the board. So how would that ever have got damaged? I mean obviously I must have done this at some point and just not realised. Maybe it was just about making a flaky connection which did allow this machine to work initially when you know I fitted the socket and put the CPU in there. But over time that trace has maybe just moved slightly it has broken connectivity. It's definitely lost connectivity now because you can see that bit just snapped off on me. But yeah, just one of those things, I suppose. And while the lack of silk screen here, well, that helped us find the break in that trace, I suppose maybe the fact that that is lacking maybe leaves those traces more susceptible to damage. And yeah, I must have just nicked it when installing this new socket. But very easily fixed. We can just run a wire on the bottom side from that via there across to pin 15 of the ROM. So through that hole there. And across to this pin, pin 15. Too much of that sheath. Exposed there. Just let me trim that a wee bit. Try and get this as neat as possible. Yeah, that looks good. And that should be it. With the CPU in place, nobody is any of the wiser. Well, not unless they look at the bottom of the board or watch this video. So let's test it. Well, it still starts up. We haven't made it any worse. And all of this does look normal. But what about that ROM test? Checking ROM. Pass. Yep, that's all it needed. How that ever got broke, I have no idea. But that is it fixed now. So fantastic stuff. I can now finally get to the project that I wanted to show you. A breakout board for the Spectrum. 
which hopefully will allow us to use multiple expansions at the same time. That will be for the next video though. The only other thing that I need to do to this machine in between times, I want to replace this uh, rather dodgy and DIY looking speaker that I fitted. I did manage to get a proper replacement from Retrolium, that code at UK. So I'll just swap them over. That is a direct fit for the Spectrum here. I'm just look a lot better than this thing. But that's going to be it for this one. Next time we're putting together this thing. So until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. Why not hit subscribe so you don't miss this one. And uh, yeah, see you next time.